Um, so again, welcome to a special Sunday, spooky Sunday night edition of Crit the Bed, where we'll be playing a different campaign in a different campaign setting with different characters, but all the same people that you know and come to expect the worst of. Uh, we'll be playing a very, very rough Curse of Strahd module, uh, whereby about 80% of it is uh, not in the book, and the other 20% is kind of more of like a framework. Um, however, for today, uh, just to get everybody back on track, because we personally haven't played it since April, um, we're just going to do a little a little actual in-module kind of oomph, sideline into the little train house, getting in there for everybody to be nice and comfortable with their characters again. Uh, and then we'll probably peel off and do something absolutely crazy uh, next the Sunday in four weeks' time when we this, I'm playing this again. So enough of my babbling. Uh, I'll get everybody else to introduce uh, who they are, who their new characters in Ravenloft are, what level they are, you know, what their uh, race is, what their class is, what they're mostly scared of, if they've got any like hopes and dreams, uh, what they received last Christmas, all those kind of things. Um, and as usual going to go reverse order because we're in Ravenloft. <laughs> Straight to you, Annie. Who are you? What do you do? I thought we, ha we, thought we had more time. <laughs> no, I surprise. It's the fear of Ravenloft. Creeping um, up inside you like a warm uh. kitten. Uh, uh, I don't remember anything. Uh, I am... What's my name? I am Soze Skin Kaiser, but you may call me Skin for short. Skin, 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 skin. skin, skin, skin. I'm a Yanti pureblood warlock. Um, I mean, that's all about I can remember. <laughs> you also, um, can you Bernard. Bernard. I have a little friend um, who I actually take <laughs> great care of in this campaign called uh, Bernard. He's a little newt, a little lizard, a little newt. Yeah, Bernard. We don't have we don't have oh, many no. pets in this one, do we? Um, I have a pet. And a child, so yeah, and um, and K Khalil has a uh, a good friend, but we'll come to that uh, as and when we do. Um, and next over, we'll go to uh, go to Josh. Who are you? What do you do in this Ravenloft, this cursed demi plane of dread? I've got a nail this, haven't I? Uh, I am Paolo <laughs> Sturcor. I'm a deep gnome druid. Pirate of the Seven Seas, and I've got a bad reputation that means that people are scared of me and women love me, or so I think. Um, I also stabbed my leg uh, with one of my own attacks, hopped in place, lost my leg, got Botticelli to spin me a new wooden leg, so now I actually look like a pirate. And um, I also like to change into animals just as, I, as much as I do in the other campaign. Except this one, I'm a bit more successful at killing people with it. You might notice a theme on certain characters. For instance, uh, both Annie and Josh. Annie, um, Annie's character in this one, Skin, uh, has also got a predilection for daggers and knifing people. And uh, Josh is a druid uh, in this campaign as well. Um, but to deviate a little bit more, let's go over to Ellie. Who are you and what do you play in Ravenloft Revisited? Um, so I... Play Ravale, who is a tiefling rogue. Um, that means that she's a really complicated character to play. Um, reading through her character sheet just now, I'm really terrified because I have all of these different like brain things that I can do to people, um, which I've forgotten all of them. So that will be interesting to try and figure that out. Um, I can't actually remember really anything about my character other than that I am. Botticelli's arch nemesis that he doesn't know about. That's <laughs> true. That's where your name originally came from, was the yeah. uh, Italian for rival, yeah, Rivale. Rival. Um, however, I, don't, I think Botticelli, to this point, is still <laughs> unaware of your uh, of your kind of like a contention between the two characters. Yeah, and um, I think the only reason that we have any sort of issue, or I have any sort of issue, is that I just really um, couldn't the thought of Khalil playing a D and D version of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like an in-game rivalry; it's a real-life rivalry. <laughs> yeah, it's a meta rivalry that filters down in game. Um, also, your character class, uh, although it says rogue, is actually um, you're a scientist or a psionics user, 
Um, but because that's not available on D&D Beyond, I had to hack and slash um, a rogue character up. And so um, some of the abilities that you do have on that character sheet aren't necessarily things you can use. Uh, I just had to use one that's as closest to a sign as, as possible, so I can just like pack it all up. Um, but you do have these side points that you can use a day, every day. It's a little bit like a warlock, um, where you can feed into uh, all these different abilities, and you can choose uh, different stances, and uh, you can level up in certain areas of psionics um, when you level up your character. Uh, but we'll get into that like during the game. Uh, right, we're going to peel off to Alice. Who are you, and uh, what do you play, and how is your character going to fare up against the evil Count Strahd? Barovia. <laughs> um, I my character's name is Ka. Um, I'm an Arakaka Ranger, which means I'm like a I think like a raven looking bird, which is on theme, but a uh, arrow person this time. And I have a giant snake called Hazar, who we have frequently fed witches to, because that's normal. Um, so, and then I used to be in a backpack band, which um, Ellie kind of got, but me and Ravale were a traveling backpack band who murdered our arch nemesis and went on the run um, and then got knocked up with an egg. So that's where I am now, <laughs> protecting Story my so far. brain dead channel. And uh, that comes on to quite nicely into Khalil. Who are you? What do you play? And are you going to be, are you going to step up to be that brain dead ex father? Or are you just going to be playing? Paying child support. I am the turtle that knocked up that raven. Uh, <laughs> and as uh, Rivale so uh, kindly pointed out, as all of my turtle brethren were named, I was also named after a Renaissance man. Uh, so in this one, I play Botticelli, uh, who is a he's a turtle artificer. I never know if I say that right. Is it artificer or artificer? I, there's so many different pronunciations, whichever one you feel most with, comfortable with. I'm going to go with whatever one I say when I say it. Um, and I'm level five. Level five. Uh, I build things like legs. Uh, I bone things like birds. And uh, I kill things like witches. So, and, and real ladies, man. And, and yeah. you've got a lightsaber. Oh, yeah, and I have a lightsaber that everybody's mad at me. Oh, they gave it to yeah. me, uh, which clearly I was deserving of it. Um, and which so every time I ask you if you're using it, you always say no. So we haven't yet seen you use your lightsaber. Well, I'm afraid that Strad's gonna know once I use it. It's like putting the ring on, and <laughs> suddenly <laughs> Sauron's gonna like. <laughs> no, I think that's a real thing. I'm um, scared if that happens. And just like in Crit the Bed, I'm super strong and super smart. So watch out, Strad. I'm telling <laughs> One you. One of those things may be true. <laughs> uh, Tim, just quickly as well, just in the chat, somebody also just flagged me, and for some reason I didn't click. I've also lost a limb in this one. You have, yeah. More themes. I think that might be more my problem, my issue, than everybody else's. I seem to take link. Although, you have all done these things to yourself. This this particular campaign, I actively was up for freezing my leg. Well, after, after I stabbed my leg, I was up, uh, actively up for freezing it. I did give you an option. I'm like, you could cure it, and you're like, no, smash. Really it, yeah. And just destroyed your, uh, your right leg, much like... Um, um, you know that, that like scene in Demolition Man with up. Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Um, can we also talk about the fact that you're a murderer as, as just the same as every other campaign? Like NPC is dead. <laughs> Again, threw this into the chat. Like I, on this this occasion, I'm allowed to be. Like he's he's a pirate. He's allowed to be, right? Yeah, but it's not going to take long. In this <laughs> campaign, you kill NPCs before we've even met them. It's because I've got a bad reputation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> got to keep it up. Who gives you the, you keep yourself his reputation? No one's <laughs> who's got this reputation. Yeah, you have no reputation. In many ports. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So I'm going to give everybody a very brief two minute max rendition of what's happened so far. So everybody's level five, <clears throat> so they haven't leveled up that much. And like I said, a lot of this stuff that happened to them is not in the Curse of Strahd uh, module. Um, they've done themselves, so uh, they all met at a festival in a small town in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, mists occluded them uh, when somebody got murdered in town. It wasn't one of you, although it might have been, but it wasn't one of you. All well, the mists descended, you got teleported to uh, the Demi Plane of Dread, um, which was unknown to you at the time. Uh, the small village that you 
occupying, uh, you then had to fight an army of marionette dolls that were um, attacking the town. Mostly they were taking uh, the... Uh, murdering the adults and collecting the children in the town centre. Um, however, you defeated them. You defeated them by getting all the marionettes into the church, setting fire to the church, and then absconding through the mists. Uh, the mists, you then figured out, border on these little small islands of planes of existence that all make up Ravenloft as it, in its entirety. So you left all of these children uh, adultless and unable to feed themselves, uh, but no marionettes trying to control them. So, you know, thumbs up. Super win. You did it. Uh, hit the road. <clears throat> you met up with um, a few uh, unsavoury characters along the way. Uh, your party is uh, inflated and deflated as you've gone through. Um, uh, you've also met a ringmaster called Hattifaltes, um that had a, a circus in the woods uh, that he wanted you to go and uh, do a little quest for. He needed um, specifically a small um, wooden box that had a ballerina inside of it that, um, when played, would play um, a certain tune as well. He sent you off to the um, what ended up being a sort of like a, an asylum. Um, however, I've got these things out of order because first... I mean, he also didn't tell us he was sending us off. He just told us we could borrow his car and then we ended up there. That's very true. He also yes. didn't get the box. You also didn't get yeah, the box. We didn't yes. even know it was supposed to <laughs> It's been so long, even I've got these things out of place because you didn't make you had to felt he's the ringmaster um, because you actually did go into the Ra Ravenloft, the Curse of Strahd universe. Um, you went to Valaki, um, you're in the town of Barovia, uh, you met uh, Irina and her it's brother, um, you met Hot Tavio, who turned into Old Tavio, which everybody <laughs> was very dis disappointed about because originally Hot Tavio was, uh, looked a bit like. Uh, Hugh Jackman from the um, Van Helsing. Van Helsing, that's the one. Thank you very much. Um, kind of looked to him, and then he found out that actually, you know, he's just an old man. Um, you went into a haunted mansion at one point, um, and you freed someone that was encased within a suit of armor. Um, you found the deeds to this place, so now you do actually have a haunted mansion. Uh, in a small town in Barovia that you can use as your base of operation. You haven't been back there yet, but it's yours. Um, you visited a um, a priest at a church whose son was in the basement who was screaming to get out. Again, he kind of pretty sure you burnt everybody there. Um, <laughs> uh, and I said Irene and her brother, um, they requested just a very small task of you to, get, to help them um, sort of get through the night, really, because they've been attacked almost every night. You just said peace out and kind of left them as well. Um, you went on to Valaki. Uh, you went to uh, Blood on the Vine Tavern. Uh, everybody was quite like, under the weather. You met some Vistani people as well. Madam um, Esmeralda gave you a fortune reading, gave you different tarot cards um, to set you on your way. Um, that's where you found the lightsaber, a.k.a. the Sunblade. Mm. Mm. Uh, then he went off towards the went to the went off to the asylum. Um, you met this uh, doctor, vampire doctor that lived beneath the asylum who was experimenting on things. Uh, you had to fight the guard before you got in there. Um, in there, because we, we changed, swapped and changed like players in and out. Um, at that point, both Cleon and... Um, Annie weren't at that session so I had their characters strapped to the table, operating table and so when you broke in uh, you found them there you tried to rescue them, the doctor was like ah, I see uh, Kara's got the egg that's what I'm really after, so apparently he kidnapped Botticelli to try and get the uh, location of the egg out of him, but you brought the egg right to him, he tried to abscond with the egg, you managed to, you managed to wrestle it out of his hands, but not before you fumbled it by uh, a natural one I believe, and just hit the ground and cracked a bit of the egg leaked out however fortunately one of you had i believe khalil uh botticelli had mending so you mended the egg back up all good as new it sloshes around a little bit but it's probably fine it's the worst could happen um then you hit the road again uh you have actually encountered uh count strad von zarevich on the road a couple of times so far he's kind of like uh teased you from afar mocked you well, he's not really in part of his. He hasn't actually mocked you. He's just 
been watching you from afar, um, which might be worse. Um, <laughs> and the very last session, uh, you headed to uh, the Wizard of the Wines Winery, www.wizardofthewinery.com, uh, where you fought some twig blights in the vineyards, um, pushed away into the winery, uh, killed all of the people that had been occupying the winery that you believed were um, the rightful owners, um, got into a, quite a, an intense rivalry, um, a rivalry of the ages, much like Rivale and Botticelli's rivalry, as we all know and love. Um, you say so. <laughs> <laughs> killed them, not before like destroying half of the interior of the winery as well. Like the entire like, first of all balcony fell, fell apart. Um, just check it. Are we asking any names as well during all this, or are we doing exactly what we do in the other campaign and just kill, don't ask? Um, I think yeah, I think most of the names that you've heard are just me reiterating them, and you haven't actually asked anybody their names. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how we go. How we feel. Yeah. How it goes. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much where we're going to be starting tonight's episode is in the Wizard of the Wines Winery, which you've liberated from the druids and the tree blights. Yeah. Um, the but we'll probably start oh. off with his car. So I'm going to uh, switch up the view for everybody. So. Mm. If you can bear with me, we are on roll twenty. I've lost my mouse. There it is. It's over here. It's over here. Uh, Third screen. I can, um, Kai, I can't remember. Did you tell everybody what the name of our egg is and why it's named? Uh, it's wonderful name. I don't think I did. No. Um, we have named the full name and title, uh, C. Craig Shame Baby. Because um, <laughs> he's a it's... secret egg, but it just came out as Craig. Yes, yeah, C. Craig. <laughs> Yeah. Shame baby. Shame, Shame baby. baby. Full name. It's it's really, you know, a powerful house name. I feel like yeah. it's he's destined to rule. Yeah, that's yeah. the name of a future leader. Yeah. First of his name. Craig, yeah. Craig Shame him. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> the first. He's, he's been referenced quite a lot. Yes, yeah. in our other campaign. Yeah. I mean it, Josh started it by showing us that video of the turtle with a crop. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to know um, how turtles have sex with um, inanimate objects. Yeah, just Josh, tweet, Josh uh, tweet underscore Josh, Jay yeah. Denham. Everyone, <laughs> everyone thinks that Tim's the one with the brilliant knowledge about animals. You've never seen a turtle with a croc. Also, like, I just want to put it out there that there is an, another, like, in-character child out there somewhere between, if everyone remembers Kate from the um, pirate episode, there was an unfortunate love scene between Kate's centaur character and Josh's horse. So you'd say unfortunate. I think Paolo. <laughs> no, that was this campaign. It's, yeah. question, it's questionable whether Paolo actually <laughs> does have all of these women that he talks about in the ports because I think that was the first time he may have met a woman. And by woman, <laughs> I mean my, Minotaur. Was she, was she a Minotaur? Sil uh, centaur. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I specifically left that bit out because even that is a bit too uh, risque <laughs> for us. Yeah. The Suffice is to that say, game you had to watch. Yeah, I'll leave it up to. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. It's so weird. The yeah. weirdest it's got. I felt, uh, I felt very weird being the one that was one of the characters. <laughs> yeah. Um, bearing in mind, so I'll leave it up to everybody's imagination. However, um. As I said, we had some rotating people in and out when we were back in uh, playing it in real life in my flat. Remember those times? Um, we had uh, a friend of ours called Kate, a very good friend of ours. Um, she played a centaur. And uh, Josh's character, uh, Paolo, is a druid who can wild shape. And I'll just leave everything up, else up to your imagination about how that went down. I mean, there's not much left of the imagination at that point. <laughs> no. Oh, there is. Trust me. I, the yeah, I didn't. I didn't talk team. about the survival check you had to do for like following the tracks. So <laughs> let's not. Oh, yeah, let's right. move on. Exactly. Quick. Yeah. That's what I was. Oh, yeah, the trail. I forgot about the trail. No, no, move on quick. <laughs> I was. I wasn't there, so you'll need to tell share with share me and the viewers. We'll tell you when we can't be back from ever streaming again. <laughs> Clear, Clear will do a nice drawing for the next one. Oh God, episode. please don't promise that. I think that might actually get us banned. Yeah, I think that's yeah, all that, it That'd be worse than the multi-nippled uh, chub. Yeah. Much, much more graphic. Indeed. Yeah. Um, right. So, on that note, let's get going. Car. 
Um, yeah. Last you knew, you were, um, you flew over the vineyards uh, to the back of it where there was a tree line because you spotted on the way in oh, yeah. that there were people watching you. Yeah, and then my thing broke. Yes, <laughs> um, and you actually flew over to them and like asked them what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't have a huge amount of interaction, so we'll probably just like restart that from scratch. Okay. So uh, you land. Uh, they were very, very tentatively like moving back, staying in the tree line, mm-hmm. uh, but there obviously is something amiss about this. Um, I'll set the scene. There is a light drizzle that begins to fall. Uh, there are unpainted fences that blindly follow the trail which skirts north of a sprawling vineyard before bending southward towards the stately building which you've flown from. Uh, the fog takes on a ghostly forms as it swirls between the neatly tended rows of grapevines. Here and there you see rope-handed half-barrels hung from hauling grapes. Uh, north of the trail is a large stand of trees. In it, a man wearing a dark cloak and cowl stands at the edge of the trees, beckoning you. So he was doing this. But you ignored him, carried on, and then eventually after that fight was done, you flew back. Okay. And if I go towards him, does he go further into the fog, or is he... He does. He kind of leads you in uh, to a point where there are five of them. Okay. Okay, yeah. Take it on this. And so... There, this is like deeper. This is like surrounded by the vineyards. This is like in the middle of the grapes and stuff. Yeah, just like north of the vineyard itself, like where the trail is, where the road is. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side of that, there's a line of trees, and they were standing in those trees. Okay. So the guy that's beckoned me, um, me and my snake, just wandering after them, slouched down, using my wings to kind of get rid of the fog a little bit, so I can see them properly, and just kind of waiting for him to stop walking and tell me what the hell's going on. Uh, He says, uh, what are you doing here? I'll be honest. (laughs) 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 We we, um, got the impression that this is where we were supposed to go um, after talking to, what what were they called again? The the Valaki? Oh, the Vistani. The Vistani people um, advised us that this was part of our future. So we sought this place out to help liberate it from the people who had stolen it. Uh, Upon mentioning the Vistani, um, a couple of the elder people that are there, the two of the adults, uh, start whispering to one another behind the main person's back. Uh, At which point he pulls his cloak back um, and you see... Uh, someone that's probably in um, like his late forties, early fifties, uh, sort of uh, pepper, pepper pot hair. Uh, it's pepper pig. It's pepper it's pig. Hair. It's daddy pig. <laughs> Looks like daddy pig. I love um, them. <laughs> uh, and he's got a salt and pepper beard, salt and pepper hair, uh, dressed in this kind of grey cloak. Um, and he says, uh, "The Vistani, they sent you." In a fashion, they, um, like tarot cards, I guess, gave us these um, indications that this was somewhere that was important in our overall mission. He takes a side glance at the other two adults and then turns back to you. So, you have met with Madame Esmeralda, yes? Yes. She sent you here, so you must be not with the cursed man, the cursed lord. That ruins this land, Strad. No? No. He's a dick. Good to hear that we are both on the same page. Uh, I appreciate what you and your uh, friends have done. Liberating the vineyards. I see they have gone inside. Um, they may face great danger, however. Um, I need uh, someone to protect us before we can really uh, reoccupy the uh, the winery and get it back onto its feet. Well, how come you couldn't... What was what was stopping you from taking them over before? Uh, was supposed to be there, was, there were too many and though we are um, we are related, we are a family, oh, there are only three of us 
who are adults to rest. We had to protect our children. And you see that the other people standing around there are, um, there are two uh, children, maybe in like uh, one's in the mid-teens, one's probably like under twelve, and uh, one of the other adults is also cradling like a swaddled baby as well. We we could not risk the younglings being left on their own. We had too much to lose, and uh, the power it, it was too powerful. Um, the enemies on the vineyard, but uh, we seem to have cleared them out, no problem. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> Somehow we manage every time to murder everyone, um, but that's not a threat. Um, let, let me escort you back in um, and offer you the protection of uh, my friends to make sure that we've cleared out the place and help you get back on your feet. Um, and then in return, maybe you could help us with some questions that we have about a few things. Oh, you are too kind. Um, yes, and if it is safe, then I'd be more than happy to reinstate my family back in the in the winery. Um, we do not have much, but uh, we have just been living on, the, uh, on what the forest can provide uh, for the last few months. Uh, however, whatever is left in the winery is yours. Hopefully we can get the production back up and running and servicing the rest of Barovia. Amazing. I think Barovia probably needs it at this point. Cool. Uh, so by the time you've like left the battle, gone up north, spoken to them and brought them back, um, everybody else has had that battle inside the winery. Uh, and so Car, you and Hazar are leading the, uh, the rest of the... Uh, the troop. Uh, the main guy whose name is called Davian. He introduced himself. Uh, Davian. They're known as the Martikov family. Immediately changed the name. <laughs> yep, da- Davian uh, Martikov. He introduced this. This is my eldest son, Adrian. Uh, my youngest son, Elvir. Um, Stefana, his adult, my uh, my daughter, and this is Dag Tomescu, my daughter's husband. And he leads you all in. <laughs> Um, We're introducing children, so this is our beautiful egg, Sea Craig. Do you reveal? You just reveal an egg. Just, yeah. Oh, it is, uh, egg. He looks just like you. I, if he does, if he looks like that, then I'll look very offended. Oh, <laughs> then he looks nothing like you. <laughs> I don't really know how to compliment your. Your egg. People in the world, you, it's fine. <laughs> you need to brush up on your egg etiquette. Oh, please. didn't actually didn't Botticelli? Didn't you draw a face on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I drew I drew a little smiley face on him. Yeah, like. he is happy and as uh, carefree as you are, Carl. <laughs> See, I knew it would get him out of trouble. What's um, this guy's name again? Davian. He's called Davian. He's called Davian. And his eldest son is Adrian. And there's also Elvia, Stefana, Dag, and then the bit little baby. Um, I'm sorry for people who are having problems watching as well. I feel, I think it's their internet rather than our stream, but I'm sorry. That's oh. your problem, not ours. <laughs> I do, I do apologise. Uh, I wish that you were not having problems with the internet. Make it so, Tim. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Christmas is on you. There you go. Too many people trying to watch. Right? That's gotta be it. Yeah. We won't do anything fun until you're back. It's fine. <laughs> we'll, yeah, Can't we'll guarantee wait. that. We'll, we'll just wait. For yeah, we'll just chat amongst ourselves. Yeah. Pretty yeah. <laughs> much all we do, anyways. <laughs> um, so he's this family. Um, the rest of you now, after this hard-fought battle, um, you witness Car come in the front door uh, with a cadre of individuals all dress, dressed in grey, dark brown and black cloaks uh, from behind. Um, and David walks in and goes, oh, at least uh, he looks in town. My God, what happened to the first floor? It is all <laughs> destroyed. The balcony was, is, is gone. It was like that when we got here. Yeah. yeah so terrible us. people. Terrible people. We're so sorry, but so, you're welcome. Well, Let's be free now. Well, at, yeah, least the, yeah. at least the vats are uh, mostly intact. Um, we can repair the balcony to the living quarters. That is um, not a high priority, but the main function of the building, it is still uh, intact. 
Yeah, you should probably like clean out the vats though, because there might be some dead bodies in the wine. Oh, Again, no. that happened before we got here. <laughs> Any clue on uh, how many of the vats were infected by with the corpses? Probably all of them. Oh, it, might, no. it might be worth changing them all. Well, I mean, they would have been spoiled by now anyway, so it would have been a. No, I'm done then. That's great. Yeah. This is why we killed them. <laughs> um, as I said to your leader, Carl, over here, and her most beautiful full of child, um, we are happy to furnish you with uh, what meager possessions we have left in the form of casks of wine. Clean wine? I had a bag of holding that I have not destroyed yet. <laughs> into a you haven't come across a black hole yet. Oh, it, yeah, I have a sphere of annihilation here. Would you like to put it in your bag of holding? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. Does it fit? Uh, yeah, can I can I put some wine in my bag? Just loose wine. Well, Just no, pour it. It'd be, it'd, be like that newspaper, it'd be like that newspaper magic trick where people hold yeah. up the newspaper and pour out wine. If we find an elevator, we can shining it and just drown people. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And uh, we should empty, hang on, you should empty one of the vats with the dead bodies in it. It's going to be this whole episode. And then the dead bodies yeah. come out. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea what else is in mine at the moment. Anyways, look, may we have the wine? <laughs> yes, Maybe of course. Maybe some muschietti. Um, and I mean, there are two different, um, two different uh, grape of wine, two different years and age. So maybe Do not, no, maybe not mix the two up, but you can if you want. I am not stopping you. Do they get you pissed? Uh, I, oh, well, all wine, all good wine should get you well, hard, then, hearty, and happy. Hard, hearty, and happy. I didn't That's say hard. <laughs> hard was not one of the things all that good I said. Wine will get you hard. <laughs> I, I, I cannot I guarantee <laughs> the efficacy of this wine Did in that regard, my friend. Did you put that on your bottles, like just as a little tag? Uh, no, we don't need happy. any more children in there. And after them, like, my <laughs> Severin Secrex is. Yeah, he can now hear through the egg because he's got a crack in it, so. Yeah, covering the crack. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so you could just fill up the rest of the, like, empty space with a bit of wine. Yeah. We should. It. I I'm, I can build stuff. I should have built him a carton a long time ago. I don't know why I didn't think of it. Carton, that was amazing. <laughs> That's true. Um, <clears throat> so they roll out um, three barrels containing uh, what's labelled on the outside in charcoal is purple grape mash number three. It's hard. Purple <laughs> grape mash number three. And there's also he also presents you a single bottle. Of purple great great mash number three, which is ready to drink right now. Is is it bad that like this is the first time I've ever written anything down in D and D and it's for <laughs> it's just, wine? Oh, alcohol, <laughs> so, great. Okay, so he's got three bottles, uh, three barrels. Now you've got me. <laughs> Everybody's uh, got a hook. You just need to find it. Um, <laughs> and then he also brings up uh, a dozen bottles of um, red dragon crush. Ooh, We've drank that before, that haven't we? You have yeah. tried Red Dragon Crush, yes. So the one thing you remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good year. It was a fine vineyard. <laughs> we um, Unfortunately, we cannot uh, really label our, uh, our wines in uh, by year anymore. We just denote them by number. Um, for uh, There are no seasons here in Barovia. It is only dark and grey and relentless. So, well, here's some wine for you, my friend. I'm actually thinking <laughs> of the 2020 of world. Yes. <laughs> if 2020 were an entire demiplane of dread, this would be it. <laughs> uh, should we ask them if they know of any uh, anybody else that's suffered from Strahd or anybody else that might have a bone to pick with them? You can yeah, absolutely ask like me this, my friend. Them. Though your uh, your accent has gone out of it. Do, oh, I was that was just out of character. In character, do you have a bone to pick? <laughs> uh, you bet your shell, I do. Uh, do you have that is a little, no, a little so, offensive. I'm really okay. tripping up on my social etiquette. I, I do apologize. <laughs> we have been living in the woods for months. Very hungry. Maybe my uh, I, I'm not as woke as I should be. <laughs> Would. 
you like us some wine um i i tend not to uh uh fuck it yes go on let's have a break <laughs> open a bottle of wine okay it actually has up. been a long time since we have drunk any of our own i was going to be more modest and professional but I don't know if anybody else remembers what the Red Dragon Crush does, but I'm going to open that up so that way we can know what happens to it when we drink it. <laughs> and I'm going to pour some glasses for everybody. <laughs> it's less um, Sweet. it's less like when you drink it, something happens. It's more how much you drink. Let's drink it all. I cannot remember. I cannot remember this at all. Either. That's all that Red I... Dragon Crush you were drinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've missed Botticelli's boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not. Uh, <laughs> just can nice I? Bit... <laughs> nice to not have to be the only one with a, with an accent. Um, yeah, you're a trooper. So yeah, true, um, we do <laughs> have true, a. Uh, uh, we have given you most of our supply, which I think uh, three barrels plus twenty one bottles, um, should say to your, uh, um, or should be a, a recompense. Apologies if it is not. Um, I can to maybe take an IOU. However, we have, we do have one tiny shipment left. Um, I could not, uh, in in all goodwill, I could not deprive all of Barovia, all of the wine that we have left here. Um, um, we don't need that much wine. So, like, maybe keep some of it, and we'll just take some of it. I'm glad like, you said this because nice I did, water. I did keep back some uh, wine off to one side. Um, which needs delivering um, post haste. However, as like, you know, it's 2020 just. 2020 is a tough year. Like, do you want to keep some more? Uh, we and tend so not you to. Can, like, start your business again? We tend not to uh, sample our own uh, as we uh, make it because we get a bit too sloshed and then maybe make an inferior product. Uh, however, if you don't mind escorting a shipment up to Kresk for us, I think it is the closest. And the safest place to go at the moment uh, was we get our winery back up and running and then we can start distributing to the rest of the towns. Yeah, we've never been to Krask before, have we? Uh, no, no, you have not ever been to Krask. <laughs> <laughs> you don't... I, I you have, Damien's been to Krask. You have the look of people who have never seen Krask to me. Um, who would we be delivering these to? Uh, to the Burgermaster. Oh, We've heard yeah. of him before. Yeah. Oh, Burgermaster is a title, maybe not a uh, person. Oh, there are multiple each... Burgermen. C- correct, there are multiple <laughs> Burgermen. Is, it, the is there a Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, if there is a Burger King, it would be, surely it would be Count von Stravich <laughs> himself. Uh, that's who he is. He's the, He's the, the, the Burger King. king. <laughs> Um, before we leave and take this ship, we have been sent here um, from a tarot card reading that said that coming here was important for us. Um, is there anything that you have in your possession that you think is important in the fight against Strad? Because, like, last time one of us got a lightsaber, and <laughs> I didn't get one, so... Do you want to tell them? It depends. I mean, a, um, a dark saber. Madame Elspeth. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, Madam Elspeth here is um, very, uh, how do you say, um, uh, it is not, not blatant, the things that she says. Uh, what is the uh, what is the fortune that she told you? How does she phrase it? For the things she that may said. be important to me might not be um, obvious. If um, it makes sense. So, in... Um, this world that we've been traveling in we had to leave many things behind and one of them was a notebook that had all my notes in oh, no. so i don't actually know how she said it to me but oh, I, maybe fine. there's uh, someone here who could help me remember one, one thing that i don't know is that this is necessarily the thing but you have children and we have an egg <laughs> and um the the dick that we all hate for burger king is trying to steal the egg you know why they would want the egg, or how we might protect our egg, and you know everyone. Um, this is uh, very disturbing that someone would want to uh, kidnap your child. Um, definitely and not do, doing like, multiple things at the same do time. Experiments on um, this is highly disturbing, and I would um, say that it is uh, 
you need to keep it with you um, and guard it at all costs. Um, I know that uh, Strahd is obsessed with his bride. Um, I don't know if uh, your um, <clears throat> child has got something to do with um, either reuniting himself with his bride, maybe it is some kind of sacrifice, maybe uh, your child is um, just to grow up to be the next reincarnation of Tatiana, his old bride. I don't. I do not know. <laughs> he carries the shame baby name. <laughs> um, are you sure it's your child, Carl? How how can you be sure? Maybe Chad had Chad. Maybe Botticelli had um, <laughs> a fun evening with Tatiana. Who is Chad? <laughs> Tatiana didn't part with the egg out. I think. Of the two parents, I think I'm the most sure. <laughs> um, it could have been artificial. Who knows? <laughs> Are you sure it's your child? <laughs> well, no, I'm not. Maybe the Burger King just wants eggs in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but how does he like his eggs in the morning? <laughs> like Mama the Kids. <laughs> there we go. The dulcet tones of Paolo Hysterical. <laughs> Bring everybody. Softly to sleep. <laughs> it's gravelly, gravelly voice. Next week, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Have yourself a shitty little <laughs> Christmas. Wow. <laughs> wow. Sorry, 22 vibes getting me there. <laughs> we all. Sorry, I'm having to dig through lots of notes from long, a long, long ago and also trying to vamp at the same I'll time. Keep on singing. Um, Fine. Do the greatest hits. <laughs> we'll play the bagpipes. <laughs> <Was, laughs> <laughs> not going to do that too long. Hey, Khalil, you know when we were in the doctor's lab? No, because I wasn't there. Neither was I, but did anything happen to us that we would know of but we don't know? I cannot answer that. Like, I feel right. like we rescued you before anything happened. Because, there... like, if I remember right, he was, like, there with a chainsaw ready to cut you in. <laughs> yeah, something dramatic. Also, and he did think he just want the eggs. I don't... I didn't get any tarot, tarot shit. I want some of this. Who was asked because you weren't there? Uh, you did. Yeah, everybody was there. Yeah, none, yeah. none of us got stuff except Cleo. It was just that she just yeah. did all the tarot cards. We all yeah, got so... one tarot card, and yeah. then Cleo with his tarot card... Well, I, with Cleo's tarot card, got him... The lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. So everybody had a um, had a tarot card. It just happens that um, Botticelli's tarot card was in the um, caravan that you're all in anyway. So out out of context, it's so fitting that I got the the lightsaber or the, the sun sword because it Ellie was actually so furious that it was a total Rivale thing. She was like, "This is bullshit. I was working on this all night long. I'm supposed to have that, and I just showed up and was like, "Hey, look at this." Yeah. I literally did all of the work, and then at the end of it, she was like, bring in Botticelli. Yeah. <laughs> no! And that's how you got your name. Yeah. Yeah, that was the start of our rivalry. Yeah. Tim, how does one find um, said tarot card that they got? I feel like that's whilst what you... Tim's trying to find. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what I'm desperately trying to find at the moment whilst you're all talking, hoping oh, that nobody can... would ask me. <laughs> I, as, anyway. I assume the tarot card said that once you show up at the winery, you will be given all the tools that you need to go defeat Strahd. <laughs> yeah. From wine, apparently. Damien. Maybe he's got like Damien. a. Damien. <laughs> he might have an allergen. Like, you just chuck the wine at him. Like, get really oh, stuffy nose, stop breathing. Yeah. Okay. Like the Wicked but Witch doesn't either. like water. Yeah. The Wicked Witch of the Windmill. Yeah. Got we'll, just tell him, we'll just tell him that it's blood. He'll drink it, die. We win. For. Um, <laughs> For for the viewers, I think it was I don't know, when we were talking about it, we were referencing this campaign, and we said that at the very beginning, Tim asked us what's our what about our greatest fears, and then it, we started this campaign, and he pretty much introduced them all in all the of our first. all of our <laughs> fears. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So good. It was really scary. somehow we we still play this game. I I, I <laughs> didn't why? expect I didn't expect him to drop in uh, dropping your child on their head, but somehow <laughs> I dropped I dropped <laughs> Shane baby on his head. Let's see how he's gonna work this one. Out. <laughs> he um. So he brings up another barrel and goes. Uh, this has been uh, down in the cellar uh, since before 
the Matikovs owned the Wizard the Wines winery. Um, it has been a keepsake, um, uh, almost like a talisman, uh, that we may never empty the sand out of here. Um, but one day, someone uh, is sent here from not Barovia, newcomers to this land, blessed by the Vistani, uh, to take this from us. And I think it is you. You're from not Barovia. Can we remember which one of us had the Wizard of the Wine as our carry? Uh, which one of you had the card of the seer? I feel like it might be me, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's you. Would it be on our equipment? It's Who is it? It's Ravali. I Rivali. think my notes are in it's it. Ravali. Ravali. <laughs> me. It was me. <laughs> I had that card. <laughs> here, here is your big barrel of sand. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it after all yeah. your efforts for the sun sword yeah you showed me <laughs> um, well done please not do not me. open or explore its contents until you are off of the uh, the wizard of the wines winery win uh, vineyard is there something in this house? what do you think's in it Damien uh, too many people and uh, too many years have gone past for anybody to say accurately some say it is a snake that will bite you and give you visions of the future. Other people say it is the skull of a wizard long left dead who can recant powerful magical and tools. Some other people say it is just dried fruit. Who could know? <laughs> it's a barrel, know. right? Either way, I absolutely love this jar of sand. It's a big oh, barrel. So it's a barrel. <laughs> like a big, like, four foot high four foot wide swollen <laughs> barrel like the, all of the um like the iron on it is like rusted and bloated along with all of the darkened wood as well what was the warning that you said came with the barrel don't open it until until you've arrive. taken it off of our, off of this land yes how, how far does your land go uh just to the road and up north where uh, your friend car the leader of this group found us Reiterating that for everyone. Let's go quickly. I really want to open it. I've got no patience. I'm going to open it right here if we don't go. I'm just, just pushing uh, it. The gremlin. I'm going to just pour out of it. <laughs> it's, um, we have, we've done our job here, right? We can't help you anymore, Damien, can we? We do it. We transfer it in the barrel for them. Yeah. Do you want, do you want to let us, That's it's how you can help us. Yes. Uh, we have. There is a cart and a horse uh, that you can use. Um, you can put the barrel in the in the cart and take it up uh go further north can you promise us that the um the horse and cart aren't enchanted to take us to a haunted mansion uh i cannot promise you this because the druids who uh, occupied this place may have put some kind of evil curse on the the cart or the horse i appreciate evil. your honesty yeah evil sat nav is a theme of this world yeah do we need to bring anything back with us do we need to return do we need to return the horse and the cart can we take it no 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 um they they know what the uh, what the down low is up in Koresk. you can deliver the cart and the horses and the barrels they will load the uh, the horse and cart with empty barrels from our last delivery and then a member of Koresk and probably some guards and maybe some commoners uh, will escort it back down to here once they need more refreshment easy okay if you're happy just to deliver it to kresk that's the end of the favor to me great and then we never have to see each other again lest you want some more red dragon crush or some conversation oh. wait and maybe yeah. you can come back and tell me what was in the barrel oh i'll send a note <laughs> excellent send it to davion uh cc <laughs> wizards of the wine winery we middle of barover i guess <laughs> we're leaving on good terms that we're not killing people. Yeah. We you already killed everybody else not. that was here, so we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, know your name so. and you're alive. Can we also call on you if we need help fighting the vampire men? Uh, roll a persuasion check. Do we think that they would help us? I was going to about to say, he sounded like an absolute pansy. When yeah, he, he sounds to. like he, he just gets mowed over. They're wizards, though. Like, surely they've got something. I just remembered something, which I don't know if this is important, but remember when we were at the pub, the blue something something? Yeah. Yeah. 
wasn't there a thing about ravens? Yeah, and it was to do with the wizards. Yes. But it wasn't ravens, it was a, wasn't it like a people of it wasn't me ravens, it was like it was something different. Uh you know I'm a raven. When you're at the uh, in Valaki at the Blue Water Inn. Uh, but also at Blood of the Vine as well. Um, you've heard of raven folk or were ravens. I'm gonna I rolled a fifteen plus oh shit, I just closed it. But persuasion was plus two. Was it persuasion or so, yes it was, yeah. Okay, then so, um, he, he gives you a knowing wink. Okay. <laughs> if you need uh, when we are back up on our feet and if you need any help, you may send a, a raven to us. Ooh, a raven. The were-raven? Where, <laughs> where is the raven? Who knows where a raven is? Okay. Um, I'll miss you, Damien. All right. Love <laughs> <laughs> plot. He gave me a jar of dirt, okay? <laughs> we bonded. <laughs> you have a life debt. Um, yeah. He, uh, he... Uh, he goes to the kitchen to offer you some like provisions, but realizes there's like just rotten food everywhere. It's like uh, <laughs> I have one more bottle of wine for the road, so take it. I'll take it. There we go. I think we have enough bottles of wine now. <laughs> put it in. <laughs> put it in the wine bag. Yeah. Well, May- no, I'm I'm snapping I'm snapping it out of his hand, but I'm just pouring out my water skin, and then I'm just kind of pouring the wine in that. Lovely. <laughs> um, go so you've got a consignment way. of uh, Red Dragon Crush to deliver to. Cresk. You also have your own stash of three barrels plus 20 bottles 22, plus one bottle. Yeah, plus another one. So that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Well done at like, keeping track of all I'm of the wine. It. I'm on it. <laughs> so I know how to engage Khalil at a game of D&D. <laughs> Just also got, like, a shitload of hallucinogenic pies as well. So. You do, yeah, and they are all on your character sleep sheet. Pies. Sleep pies. I thought there were sleep pies. That's true. Yeah. We're in for a while. Don't we? <laughs> Hang on, this needs this needs an explanation, right? To whoever's watching this. Yeah, no, there was a pie fight, wasn't yeah. there? Where these pies got thrown. <laughs> yeah, dream cream. No, no. <laughs> I can't believe that's on video. <laughs> Magic. But that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. You put it Tim, in someone's mouth. Tim Tim made a bunch of dream cream pies and tried to feed them to us. We said no. We shoved them in his face. In yeah. the game. For the record, in, in, the, in game. the game, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it, so far, it, the two yeah. villains that we've fought, we've managed to successfully beat them <laughs> using these pies, their own pies. So Tim many. Has just regretted it ever since. Yep. Yep. We also, <laughs> to defeat the the windmill witches, um, uh, Botticelli shrunk the windmill, but the children that we were supposed to save were inside and like had loads of broken limbs. Yeah. <laughs> They, yeah, again, we freed them. We we, freed them. we did free them with a bunch of broken bones, but we that's when we got all these these sleepy pies. So they make you fall asleep as soon as you taste them, and we've just been shoving them in people's faces, and it's working. Um, we are so saving at least two for Strahd. Oh, like definitely definitely more than that if we can. Um, <laughs> just pies. as a note, between all of you, you've got fourteen witch pies. Yeah, fourteen okay. pies and twenty one bottles of wine. Yes. There will be an assault on Strahd like you've never seen. Food fight. <laughs> food fight. That's why I was going to ask. We've got 20 odd bottles of wine for us. Three barrels for us? Yes. And then what? One barrel for the place we're going to? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, they're all... Um, the no barrels are all bottles. How many bottles for the place we're going to? 40. Oh, okay. Why don't, Let's why ride. Don't, why don't, when, we, yeah. when we meet Strahd, why don't we just say... Should we just have... like? Pie and pie and wine. Yeah. I would say that if he wasn't he's, trying to kill my child. Yeah, t- Tim already said that he's been watching us, so he knows what we're up to, whether we like it or not. Oh, he knows about the dream pi- dream pies. Yeah, he's probably I'm not already. Kind of dream that. cream. Just say it, Eddie. Dream cream. I don't want to say it. <laughs> magic, magic. Dream. Dream. Pie. Cream. cream. <laughs> and you're collectively known in Barovia as the as the dream cream team. <laughs> <laughs> oh no we're playing wrong it sounds like it sounds like they play kickball <laughs> very I'm lackluster dream, and like dream. depressedly mm. <laughs> <laughs> lackluster they're just kicking a ball around and just looking I'm at their feet and shuffling the around like, shit it's the dream cream team again <laughs> <laughs> those guys are here <laughs> <laughs> they're jar of dirt again <laughs> 
Good. Um, let's let's leave because I am really getting impatient to open this jar of dirt. Okay. Um, Thanks, Damien. Yep. He bids you uh, give him, farewell. Give him, a, give him a wizard wink. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, a a wizard wink like turns your eyelashes to a small bat, and the bat flies away. <laughs> That's how you know it worked. Yep. It's a good trick. So, um, uh, you leave the vineyards. Uh, there, Davy and the rest of his family all stand on the porch uh, and give you a farewell. Um, and against your better knowledge, you think just out the left hand side of your eye, you see Davian's arm turn into a giant raven wing as he's waving. But you look back and oh. it's just a regular arm. Gonna raven my own raven arm back at him. I think he was hitting on you. Yeah, I got them. <laughs> Gives you another raven. wizard wink. Turns into a bat and flies away. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go back and um, make sure that that was what was happening. <laughs> you can leave you there. But the bat like flies up to car, just lands on car's cheek. Oh, it's in weird. Let's see. <laughs> see Craig too. <laughs> see Craig, don't look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, for the benefit of everybody and me, where is Sea Craig right now? I know you have a sort of hand. We trade him off. Yeah, we trade him off. I get weekends, I think. <laughs> no, wasn't it day and night? I can't remember. Yeah, I think I think you get him during the day and I get him at night. Yeah. Which isn't. No, that's no not I think very it's the other way around. Actually. Actually. Yeah. It is yeah. the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're right. armored. You keep him in your shell in the day, mm -hmm. and then. Car incubates him at night. <laughs> you also have like a fairy in your shell as well. Yeah, I got I got a couple people living in my shell. Right? <laughs> yep. Uh, is it daytime or is it nighttime? Can I have Craig? Yeah, you've got him. I think he's safe. I'm gonna draw a new face on. Fairy him. and the shadow assassin. Don't draw faces on him though. I'm gonna draw a new face on him that says uh, "Car's taken." You should, know, you should just have like an angry, an angry face, a sad face, and a happy face, and then. Just turn, turn it around. around. That's, a good, around. That's, a, that's a better idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A little I'm speech gonna... bowl of like, don't leave us, mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember the good times. I uh... just want us to be a family. You're, <laughs> you're the one with 21 bottles of wine. <laughs> and three barrels. And three barrels. What uh... Shelley's got? 22 bottles of wine on the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... So, uh, I believe. Um, I believe, uh, Ravali, you want to open up your barrel. Yeah, what's the best way, do you think? I'm going to put it to the spray. group as a vote. Do we carefully um, empty out the sand and see what's inside? Oh, or do we cool. smash it on the floor with like as much force as we can? Roll it into a tree. What's the chance that you can wait long enough to carefully pour out the sand? Um, <laughs> should we find out? <laughs> is there a way? Yeah, is there a way that like there's no Chad's pad in this universe for some dumb reason? But is there a way for us to like do it without fucking ourselves over if a giant octopus explodes out of here, or an army of goblins, or a black hole of annihilation? Mm -hmm. The first step should be to get the bag of holding far, far away. <laughs> or, well, I'm not or... getting off the wagon. <laughs> or you get it over the top of it. You get the bag of holding ready. I know you need it quite big if it's something big. Yeah. I don't think yeah, it's going to be a black hole. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to take the lid off. Okay. Not yeah. Every time we open a gift from strangers, it's a black yeah, hole. Yeah, it always black. <laughs> um, Why does this keep happening? <laughs> you you pry the top off and it takes some doing. Like you have to like really dig in like daggers or a short sword, something like that. Or like a crowbar if you've got one. And I've got break one. open the top. There you go. Um, and inside is just a thick packed layer of like a brown, brown red sand. I <laughs> some of it out and I place it carefully next to me okay. <laughs> in case the, the sand is the magic thing. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you scoop some up and put it next to you, and there's just like a little divot left in the sand. I'm so happy. I'm going to stick my hand in it okay. and just wiggle uh, and see how far I can get. You're going to see how far you can get. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll me an investigation check, please. 
the Sandy Handy is that's that's what I call it. Sandy Handy. For some reason that sounds answer. really wrong and I don't know why. It sounds really wrong, but also its purpose is very unclear. Oh. <laughs> Say investigation, please. What is my oh, plus seven. You're a reporter. Oh, eight. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so you, you dig around for a good few minutes, and all you come back with is just like another handful of sand. And sand, sand's gone everywhere at this point. So up your sleeve, and then it's gone inside your tunic, and down oh, right, around no. your belt, and uh -oh. like, it's under your fingernails as well. And it's that kind of sodden, packed sand as well. So it, like. Andy Even if you brush it, now. it just becomes like an abrasive. In the bagpipes. And some of it's in, like, in the tube of the bagpipe somehow. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to believe that I have just been given a barrel of sand. Um, <laughs> what's the... Does anyone have any sort of like magic detection? Maybe we should oh. pour some wine on the sand. No, this is my <laughs> sand, not yours. <clears throat> Yeah, Why well, don't you throw throw like a little get a little bit of the sand and like throw it? Do you remember those like little explosive things? With oh yeah, like like salt paper with sand. <laughs> sure, yeah. I've got I've got you... earth tremor, which like you know when you, you <laughs> know, no, 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 wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. You know when you know when you're like you've got a jar of something and you want to get like the big stuff to the top, you can just shake it. <laughs> okay. To I know what you're on about. I'm gonna I get some like tip it. That's why shaking it. I feel like yeah. you don't have to cause an earthquake. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just double checking the damage that might do. It's one D. <laughs> no, we're not we're not casting earth tremor on my magic sand. Bit... But also, well done for checking the damage before you commit to it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. That's <laughs> character growth. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, can no, I no. do like a nature check on it or? An arcana check? Uh, yeah, I'll let you do an arcana check. Nineteen. Yeah, you can definitely sense something magical, like from the bottom of the from barrel. The bottom. Okay. Yeah, I keep going. This time, I'm like shoveling out the sand. Hang on, um, brain. Eventually, brain. you brain. shovel out enough sand, and your fingernails hit something hard um, and pulling it up out of the sand you find it's a tome giant oh. like iron bound book um, you always get the books <laughs> brown leather uh, it's emblazoned with the symbol of a raven uh, and, a, and a wolf with wearing a crown and a sword gripped between the talons Hold on. a raven and a wolf with a yep. crown and a sword yes can I open it can i open it but like peek in it so that none of these guys can see what's in it what if this sword pokes out and gets you in the eye right and that's my fault i've just shown you shown you your handout in roll 20. oh <coughs> oh i can't read that oh it's tra <laughs> <That's been> tra <laughs> <laughs> yes translated below um i feel like i shouldn't read all of this while you will just wait for me can i think you should read it out loud it says a lot. I, I can read it out loud in Strahd's voice if you want. Yeah. yeah Uh-oh. I've got Strahd's diary. Hey. <laughs> Let's read it and make fun of him. Good <laughs> love him. Today I saw I... Davian walk by. <laughs> My... I bumped into Tony in the locker room and he gave me no eyes, but I love him so much. <laughs> will he ever like me back? <laughs> Um, I will rule this land. <laughs> For the name of Tony. Him, I've made him a mixtape. <laughs> All of my... King, track one. It's mostly Please. Depeche Go Mode. <laughs> <laughs> I am the ancient. I am the land. My beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past. I was a warrior. I was good and just. I thundered across the land like the wrath of just God. But the war years and the killing years wore down my soul as the wind wears stone into sand. All goodness slipped from my life. I found my youth and strength gone, and all I had left was death. My army settled in the valley of Borovia and took power over the people in the name of a just god, but none of the gods' grace or justice. 
I call for my family, long unseated from the ancient thrones and brought to them here to settle in the castle Ravenloft. They came with a younger brother of mine, Sergei. He was handsome and youthful. I hated him for both. From the families of the valley, one spirit shone above all others, a rare beauty, who was called perfection, joy, and treasure. Her name was Tatiana, and I longed for her to be mine. I loved her with all of my heart. I loved her for her youth. I loved her for her joy. But she spurned me. Old one was my name to her, elder and brother also. Her heart went to Sergei. They were betrothed. The date was set. With words she called me brother, but when I looked into her eyes they reflected another name, death. It was the death of the aged that she saw in me. She loved her youth and enjoyed it, but I had squandered mine. The death she saw in me turned from her and me, and so I came to hate death, my death. My hate is very strong. I would not be caught death so soon. I made a pact with death, a pact of blood. On the day of the wedding, I killed Sergei, my brother. My pact was sealed with his blood. I found Tatiana weeping in the garden east of the chapel. She fled from me. She would not let me explain, and great anger swelled within me. She had to understand the pact I had made for her. I pursued her. Finally, in despair, she flung herself from the walls of Ravenloft and I watched everything I wanted fall from my grasp forever. It was a thousand feet, though, through the mists. No trace of her was ever found, not even I know her final fate. Arrows from the castle guards pierced me to my soul, but I did not die. Nor did I live. I became undead forever. I have studied much since then. Vampire is my new name. I still lust for life and youth, and I curse the living that took them from me. Even the sun is against me. It is the sun and its light I fear the most. But little else can harm me now. Even a stake through my heart does not kill me, though it holds me from movement. But the sword, that cursed sword that Sir Guy brought, it might dispose of that awful tool. I fear and hate it as much as the sun. I have often hunted for Tatiana. I even felt her within my grasp, but she escapes. She taunts me. She taunts me. What would take me to bend her to love me? I now reside far below Ravenloft. I live amongst the dead and asleep beneath the very stones of this hollow castle of despair. I shall seal shut the walls of the stairs that no one may come disturb me. I'm so mad that my magic tarot gift was just a note to say how cool the sun sword is. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Aren't we all glad we've got that? <laughs> I, I think he probably has some cure on that Depeche Mode uh, sound <laughs> mixtape. Quite he possibly. Yeah. yeah, he sounds like a bit of a loser. Like, get over it. He's she so... likes someone else. Move on. Go on. So let's, emo. let's go emo. win over Tatiana. Yeah. And uh, ru really rub it in his face while we stake him to the ground. Let's figure out how to make ourselves look like Sergei and Tatiana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just read parts of that out when we fight him, just to make fun of him. Like, with, with like, love hearts drawn on. Oh no, Tatiana, I saw her. I had to leave my grass. Oh. oh, my young, beautiful old younger brother. Blah, 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 blah. Sergei this, Sergei Dude. that. <laughs> Do, yeah, let's definitely do that. Do we think Sergey's still alive? Um, so. no, as you just said, we did oh. kill him. <laughs> yeah, Sergey. Sergey. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Count von Stravich's did... brother is dead. Yeah, He's but still... if if Strad died but didn't die, couldn't Sergey have died and not died? Well, no, he killed Sergey so that he, he made... could then not die. He made a pact By of blood. Him, he made a pact. Got it. Yeah, I was only listening to the whiny part, so I was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it was none. So it was we none of it. We killed Strahd with a pact of blood, and then we can all be the new Strahd. Let's make our own pact of blood. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it's just become how? full evil how is the answer. How do again. we do that? No, anyway, Annie, you're, you're, you're that in the other campaign. Leave off this one. Oh, sorry. Not sorry, reading this mopey diary has made me a bit emo, okay? Let's move on. <laughs> also, um, Jack Taylor suggests in the chat that instead of killing him, we do like a whole pretty woman montage to help him get over <laughs> to the other people. <laughs> Give him a makeover, introduce him to a new girl. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm into that, yeah. Um, I feel like even though I have learned something from this, I am really bitter because it just talks about how cool the sunboard is. So um, after I gave that dramatic reading to everyone in the car, <laughs> <laughs> I um, say let's move on we can't do any with the, anything with this learning until we're actually closer to strad like we're not actually going to get anything from it right now so let's just go to where we're going let's forget that my tarot card was maybe the worst one let's just move on there's no need to be down about it come on why don't you, why don't you write a letter about it yeah i pull out um, <laughs> uh, ironically exactly like replica diary and stuff <laughs> <laughs> my more attractive <laughs> D &D, D D campaign person what do you call them in this world we're not friends <laughs> or Dicelli, or the better my more attractive D D friends <laughs> i was like how do you talk about your friends in campaign world like traveling mate we're not mates like uh associate Canyon? Yeah. Oh, fellow hero, technically. Cream team member. <laughs> <laughs> Champion. Your colleague. My colleague. <laughs> My travelling colleague. Fellow wine delivery driver. <laughs> it's literally the only reason that we're all friends as a group is because we collectively abandoned a group of orphan children. And That's the only thing binding us. Bond you like that. Yeah. We had no choice. We but we saved them. Yeah. Yeah. True. We True. saved them, but then they'll, they'll be dead by now. Saved we'll... them by breaking their bones. Yeah. But like people die, and that's not a re like that's not a result of other people's actions. Like just because we left them with no food, like they we didn't starve them ourselves. That's true. Also, that was one thing. We've been good. The rest of it. Yeah, we didn't kill those five guys. Yeah, exactly. We. Uh, Set a witch on fire on someone's doorstep. And... I was I wasn't there, so. <laughs> and it but worked. I was there. Too. I was there. For that. <laughs> and it worked. Uh, should we deliver this wine? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now that we're done with all the whining. <laughs> how, how long? How long? <laughs> how long's this trip? Do we get rest? Uh, right. So, I will give you one long rest. Nice. Hey. However, who who is driving the cart? Whilst traveling. Oh. Um, um, I can I can drive. I'm a ranger in this, so I've got at least some load still. I was gonna say you and um, Skin both have full health as well. So um, now after bit. long rest, you can all hit tap the long rest button. But tell me who's driving. Oh, <laughs> I don't mind driving. Okay. Oh so car, uh, roll me a perception check, please. Oh. Everybody else is asleep. I haven't seen this either. Either. Oh, yes, that's great, but who's seven. driving? Five plus seven. Seven. Okay. So no, sorry, five plus so. Oh, five twelve. plus seven. Twelve. Sorry. Um. Okay, that's better. So everybody else is asleep in the cart. Um, like all huddled up in the back because there's not a huge amount of room, but there is enough straw that they use to pack the barrels and the, and the casks of wine, so they don't get damaged. Um. You kind of look back over your shoulder to make sure that C. Craig is okay because you have to forego your nightly um, incubation in favour of travelling through the night, hoping that the next yeah, day when you rest, you'll get Hazar. the impact. And it, yeah, Hazara is uh, slithered up around your feet to keep them warm, like Mate, a little pillow. That's he true. doesn't eat this egg, though. He just wants to nuzzle the egg, yeah. right? Yeah, in Friendly. his belly. Yeah. Nuzzle his it into his open. belly. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. <clears throat> the one that's doodling on him one day. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a Barovian night time, which seems to be infinitely more darker than the night time that you're used to. By infinitely, I just mean slightly less dark than the normal night time. <laughs> uh, you can't see any stars in the sky, 
Um, you don't know whether or not that's because of the cloud cover, because of the overhang, the oppressive nature of the forests over the trail. Um, the br- the limbs of the trees seem to almost um, hang so low and so heavy that they try and grasp you as you navigate the horse and cart up the uh, the rough, rugged trail that's dug into the grass. Um, everything's bouncing around as you do it. Um, sometimes you get thin slivers of the moon peeking through the canopy only to be shut out again and just left in utter darkness. Uh, your head swivels back from looking, checking on Sea Craig and Botticelli. You turn back just in time to see a pair of legs hanging down in front of you that just brush the side of your face. Um, you pull on the reins to stop the cart and look behind you and you see that there is uh, a hanging body from a limb of a tree swinging now above like a pendulum of death above uh, the rest of your sleeping companions creaking back and forth it slowly rotates to show the face of uh, Irina's brother oh no that was awful yeah but they were totally doing it right yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a, there was a yeah there was a weird. They were like, weird. His mark and, said and most, that he loved his bugs, sister. Yeah, sure. yeah. And most of the brothers sisters stuff that Tim puts Get out there it gets really like. Uh, yeah, I don't bad. know. Kind of. It's, it's the way they, that you describe it. They cared about each other way too much. Like I would not attempt to bury a body with my brother, and then I wouldn't <laughs> ask people to help us like. Well, yeah, they they buried the body after they they buried the body together after they boned. So like, yeah. there was something weird going on. <laughs> that was the father, to be fair. Wasn't Probably it? had to kill the dad because he knew yeah. something weird was going on. Yeah. It's um, fine. It's probably a good thing they're dead. Let's keep going. It's, it's for the best. So we're we don't want to bury the body. We're just going to leave him hanging from a tree. Is that the concern? Um, I mean, we're asleep. Yeah, the it's up to you. Is, yeah, it's up to you. The, oh yeah, it's up to you, Karen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's now gonna... just swinging and creaking and slowly rotating over the sleeping forms of companions. Feel a little bit guilty, and I also feel like it was put there because, like, he's watching us, and he obviously like, why would it be here? So I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna arrow the body down, try and aim it so that it just like falls on the floors. Okay, roll to hit. Or you can roll a one and get it in the head or something. <laughs> Not the right attitude. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> you <laughs> cut the rope. Uh, and the body falls heavily in the middle of the cart, nestled between Paolo and skin. It just lands thump. Okay. Wake us up. No. Sweet. Very tired. <laughs> Fine. I'm just, yeah, I need to sleep. Um, yeah. Roll over and cuddle up to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, bury it in the, in the morning and hope it doesn't come back to life and then my friends in my sleep. So you're just going to leave a dead body? <laughs> yeah, because Paolo's spooning it. I don't want to stop the cart for so long that like wolves come out of the wood or something and mental starts happening. So it's like one zombie body or an army of bats or whatever's going to come out of the forest. Yeah, it's the right choice. Yeah. Keep going. We have, a, we have a child to look after. <laughs> we have to think differently in this world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he could be a vampire if he's not already. Yeah, at least he'd be alive then. We can like, be friends with him again. I apologise. <laughs> As you are... Um, you set off on the cart again, um, and it slowly lumbers uh, to its canter. You just hear... You don't know if it's the wind, the creaking of the trees, or your imagination, but you just hear... Gah. And I can't tell where it's coming from. Seems to be all around. Do I recognise the voice? Uh, roll a insight check. Does it sound like an industrious thing? Why do I keep rolling 15, like, consistently? Yeah. Um, plus 4, 19. You're just typing 15 in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, a nine, with a 19, it sounds like Irina's voice. Irina's voice? It does sound like an incestuous thing. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm going to whisper into the fog. Irina. In the equally creepy way. Irina. Um, 
there there is no answer. Okay. And after a few minutes, you don't hear anything else like whispering to you from the woods. And I'm going to take it as that. Uh, can four of you? So that's Botticelli, Paolo, Skin, and Rivali. Can you all roll Constitution checks for me, please? Uh, wow. Constitution. Um, 20, 21. 21. Paolo? Paolo? Plus, plus three. Oh, shit. Uh, 23. A natural 20. Ten. Some highs and lows. <laughs> so oh. four. It's so a four and a six. Okay, so um, Skin's the last to awake. Uh, then the second to last is Rivale. Uh, then it's Botticelli. But the first to awake is Paolo, who is spooning a cold, dead corpse. <laughs> The in the back. <laughs> Beat me to it, then. <laughs> uh, so, like, hu- hu- hugged, like, hunkered up, spooning, uh, like, what you think is um, someone from your past that you've met in a port that you your ship was anchored at for a few months after a particularly good uh, pirating uh, raid. Um, and you met this young woman in a tavern uh, you had money to splash around. Um, you bought a small hut on the beach and you spent nearly a 10 day just you and her drinking rum Trinder. and uh, making love and watching the ocean. That's my, uh, that's my lover, Brenda. She, uh, <laughs> she's got a lovely, lovely place in my heart. <laughs> I was wondering what you were going to do. She's got a lovely... Uh, <laughs> Place of heart. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, I'm a half asleep state. It's like, oh, Br- Brenda. <laughs> and you open but your eyes, better. and there's a half rotten face of a human man. Um, <laughs> and it falls towards you. And as it does, uh, what's left of the eye that is like the outside of the eye is rotten away, so it's just sludge. It just pours out onto your screaming face um, and then you blink your eyes and you like sit up straight and there's nothing next to you except straw and you're in the back of the cart and it's a slightly greyer day than it was previously we're getting haunted uh-huh. Is, what's his, what was his name again Tim sorry is it... it's Mark is Mark? Is Mark? I remember that. <laughs> Can I feel into like? Is there any residue or anything of that sludge that? Uh, in your face? Yeah, you touch your cheek and there's like moisture, and then it's probably just drool, is that, but it might not be Brenda drool. Or is that is Mark? Pa- pa- I'm just calling back now. Is 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 Mark? Is Mark back with you? I've, um, I've literally got no fucking idea. <laughs> he was. But it was Brenda. Brenda was him. And now they're not here. Neither of them are here. Hmm. What's going on? Sounds right. Uh, probably nothing. Maybe haunting. I don't like hauntings. So I've had a fair share of them out on the seas. On my ship. Um, I didn't sign up for this. But there's, there's 100% no zombie back there. There's Definitely no corpse not. back there, no. Definitely okay. not. Well, I mean, it's not the worst thing that could have happened for it to be not real. Mm-hmm. At least it's not alive and attacking you. But I'm, that's uh, not normal. No. no, it's a bit weird. I've got a bit, bit of moisture bit in weird. face. Can't, can't tell if it's mine or uh, ghosts, but um, I'm just going to come and sit next to you if that's all right. <laughs> going to just clamber over everyone. As Paolo clambers everybody, but he kind of kicks Botticelli in the side of the head and you wake up. You look around. Uh, you see Paolo and Carr sitting on the uh, the front seat, navigating the cart. Skin and Rivali are still fast asleep on the back. And um, uh, you feel you feel a slight hum uh, at your waistband where the hilt of the sunblade is. I... I... Tap it down. <laughs> you, you twist the hilt and they turn it down so it's off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how you wake up every <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> so I, I turn it to low mode, and uh, uh, I, I feel like I've gotten a good night's a good night's rest, and uh, I wake up for some breakfast. Okay, um, still rattling around in your chest cavity is he, Craig? Is he okay? Yeah, what's he's fine. The, what? what <laughs> Which face is a face in me? Is it a sad face or a happy face? Roll or a D4. Face? Uh, one is happy, two is sad, three is surprised, and four is uh, like neutral. Oh, there you go. He's a neutral, neutral. face. Neutral. So he's slept a well. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Just like eyes uh, across, mouth across, that emoji. Once again, I'm going to chat back. Do you see any zombies back there? <laughs> no. Roll okay. a perception should, check, Botticelli. Should, should I? Yeah, that could be debated. Okay. Um, as you you look around, uh, you are trundling through uh, Barovia. Uh, so these are like very narrow uh, wagon carved paths, like the side of mountains over hillocks through fields. Um, they're not paved roads or anything. So. Um, Nothing gets none of the shrubbery gets cut or anything like that, and usually it just follows the edge of like a wood or a field or a cavern or a crevasse or anything like that. Um, you look up to your left hand side. To the right hand side, there's just fields. The left hand side, there's an overhanging wood, and as you look into between the trees, you can just see four or five wolves, um, casually uh, loping along like parallel to the cart. Watch every so often one of them will stop and turn its face to you. And in the darkness, you can see that reflective quality of their eyes. Uh, and then it will just rejoin the pack and they'll alternate like that. we That's what Tim meant earlier when he said we've seen them a bunch because we've run into wolves many times so far in this campaign. But this time, I see them. What can I do to them? To I don't want them to know that my... Uh, my thing's going off. That's why it was going off. <laughs> That's why I was at high alert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haunting alert. Straddle alert. Um, what can I... I don't want them to know I have it. Um, I'd like to just ward them off. Can I... Shoo. 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 I don't, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. Last like... time we did just call them dicks and they got, did leave. Oh, that's right. Whistle. We just called them dicks. <laughs> We got a dog whistle and some chicken. A dog I don't think I have a dog whistle in my equipment. <laughs> I've got a backpack, and I've got a. I forgot about this. I have a frog on a stick. Oh. <laughs> uh, rope, rations, tinderbox. Um, can I? I guess I'll just. I'll just yell at them. I guess. Subtle. What? What do you yell at them? Uh, I see you, fucko. <laughs> Um, when you, when you address them directly, uh, they retreat further into the woods. Though you can't see them, you still f- kind of feel their presence. Is is my hip still vibrating? No, you turn it to silence, so you've gone there. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, my friends that are awake. Uh, you so now I'm... kind of like wake skin and uh, revali up together at this point. Uh, you remember those wolves that we called uh, bad names before? The dicks, yeah. Dicks. Yeah, the, the dicks. The dicks are in the woods. <laughs> dicks in the woods? Dicks are in the woods. It's like a bulb in a bush, but a dick like, in the wood. Dick, <laughs> dick in the woods. I don't take any ownership over this. That's like all Josh's. I don't know those. <laughs> In my half sleep, I just go. Sh- are you sure it's not just a bulb? <laughs> uh, yeah, the the Burger King. He's watching Burger us King. again. He's what? He's watching us again. So we um, got a whopper for us. We what? We got a, a whopper. What? <laughs> a whopper in the woods. Give us a whopper, you coward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a veggie burger, please? <laughs> I feel like if he's just watching us, that's fine. Um, he also might have sent the vision of a dead person that I wouldn't even call a friend, more like an acquaintance. So if he was trying to freak us out, 
by like making us feel bad about that and that backfired because we've already forgotten him. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like how much he knows about us though. No, we know a lot about him. We've got his diary. Oh yeah, you should just start yelling out the diary out loud. <laughs> yeah. Start reading. Dear diary. I am the ancient all powerful Strahd. Um, do you open the diary? Oh shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck yes. I guess the yeah, idea. Fuck I yes, let's barbecue that. some wolves. Um you turn to the page that had the original ins- uh, inscription that you were reading from Fuck. before. Uh, it's not there anymore. Um, Is there anything there? Yes. It says, The gleam in her eyes was like warm sunlight on a still <laughs> pond. <laughs> that light is gone forever. When I try to imagine those eyes, all I see is a mad abyss. And that's it. I read that out loudly so the wolves hear. Her um, gleam in her eyes, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I and have at this so point, um, car, um, mm-hmm. the road now branches north and climbs to a rocky escarpment, um, ending in a gatehouse built into a 20 foot high wall of stone, reinforced with a buttress every 50 feet or so. A so, but- buttresses are just like these like little waitress just with chaps. So, yeah. yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> that's definitely uh, a wall encloses a settlement on the side of a snow dusted mountain spur. Um, beyond the wall, so you can see just over the wall, you see the very tops of snow-covered pines and thin white wisps of smoke. Uh, the sombre toll of a bell comes from a stone abbey that clings to the mountainside, high above the settlement. Uh, the steady chime is inviting, a welcome change from the deathly silence and the oppressive fog which you've grown accustomed to. It's hard to tell the distance, but it seems to be a switchback of road clinging to the cliffs. So it goes back and forth. Uh, that leads up from the wall settlement to the abbey. And this looks like the place that we were told to go to. Uh, suddenly this road ends there. Um, I shout back at the wall. See you later, losers. <laughs> is this, and there is a howl. Does this match the description? The um, right. They didn't give you much of a description other than that uh, Kresk is a walled like settlement, and this is very walled. Okay, this, this looks right. And there are buttless waitresses there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Interesting development. What? Why not? Um. So, you can go in. I was just gonna say, anytime we yell at the wolves from now on, like from from here on out, we have to start it with "Dear Diary." <laughs> <laughs> Dear Diary, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So do you carry on? Yeah, carry on into okay. this place. I'll read you more narrative then. Uh, the air grows colder as you approach the walled settlement. <clears throat> You're now high up in the mountains. Um, two square towers with peaked roofs flank a stone archway, uh, into which is set a pair of 12 foot tall iron bound wooden doors. Um, carved into the arch above the doors is the name Kresk, which is the right. town that you were directed to. Uh, the walls that extend from the gatehouse are 20 feet high. Atop the parapet, which is the place that people can walk across, uh, you see four figures wearing fur hats and clutching spears, and they watch you nervously. Uh, hmm. It's okay, we have wine. Wave. Wave a bottle in each hand. (laughs) Oh, you just wave uh, wine. Uh, One of them excitedly uh, shouts over to uh, one of the two square towers, <clears throat> with the peak roofs. He's like, why don't you let them in? Let them in now. They've got the wine. <laughs> let them in now. Please no, God damn it, no. <laughs> <laughs> and slowly the doors to the settlement start creaking open. Let them bring wine. That's what we need to say. Can we give royal waves as we go in? Yeah, sure. And as you give royal waves, people start la- lining the streets. <laughs> Uh, and they've got like different coloured like, scarves or handkerchiefs or belts. And they start waving them excitedly in the air as you bring the cart in laden with wine. And they're um, just can cheering. I, can I take one of our bottles and open it and just start spraying it across the crowd? <laughs> sure, you just like throw red wine into people's faces and staining their clothes. 
<laughs> you keep you keep beating us to to what I want to do. That's exactly what I want to do. I wanted to start. So on both sides, like, both, both sides, sides Ravale and Botticelli are just opening yeah. up a couple of bottles of wine from me and personal stash. Copy me, and I'm like, you can get another one. Now I've got two. <laughs> there's uh, on Botticelli's side. There's uh, there's a, a recently. Uh, a recently mothered person holding the baby up in celebration, and just like the wine goes over the baby's face, <laughs> and it starts yeah. sputtering, but then like, but then looks happy. Yeah, uh, we, we, we have arrived. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are three or four guards that just join your cart and start jogging along beside you, like escorting you up the main thoroughfare to uh, a wooden stone keep in the middle of the settlement at this level like i said the um the uh, the abbey is further up the side of the mountain but it looks like this is the main um uh focal point of the settlement um uh they everybody follows you like just shops and um, domiciles empty and you've just got a huge swarm of people following you up the trail um, and they start trying to like climb on board the cart to get to the we've wine o- we've only got 40 bottles of wine like this isn't enough to feed an entire town no and god forbid if we give them any of our wine <laughs> I know don't tell them about that <laughs> give them my loudly sand in front of no, give Give them our sand. In their eyes. Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> do, do you not think this is a bit extreme? Well, we're also delivering the good news that we fixed the winery and there'll be more wine. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. Good shout. They should name a public holiday after us. A thousand percent. If there's not statues of us next time we come, then we can take the wine away. So Dream cream. Burn it all down. <laughs> do you think that they think... Do you think that they think that we're here with other anything else. No, I don't no, know I what you mean. They're they're just happy about the wine. That's that's why they're so excited. No, they're about to eat us. <laughs> Did we just accidentally crash the sacrifice is with a nice bottle of Chianti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, realize they weren't chanting wine. They were just chanting flesh, new flesh. <laughs> 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 well, fresh no. meat, fresh meat. They were definitely wine after the wine, like and they were wine. very happy with wine. Uh, start whispering in the crowd. <laughs> um, and as you do, like a couple of people right at the front who are climbing aboard the cart, like they just take one, two, three bottles of wine away from the cart. Right. We start kicking them down. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Throw sand in their eyes. Back you fucking peasants. We. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I demand to see the mayor of this town. You want to see the mayor? Yeah. Um, as as you say, you demand to see the mayor. Uh, the guards idea. that are escorting you then form a line and start pushing the um, the rest of the populace back. And they're like, uh, it will all be distributed soon, don't worry. We will all have wine in our bellies tonight. Just stand back. Um, I take a bottle of one of um, our wines and I throw it into the crowd. Okay. Like, You're down to 19 bottles of wine. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Three casks and nineteen bottles of wine. Still a lot of wine that we have on our person. Uh, way, more than than <laughs> way more than what they started with. Way more for the five of you than the forty plus settlers that are <laughs> in point, this crowd. The point is that it's our wine. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Skin, our skin wine. gets it. So yeah. we get to decide what we do with it. We could, Not throw we it could out sell. We could sell some of it. Get much money. Yeah. We pour maybe, it in this than maybe the other we we could, but what, when do we ever spend any money? We don't, we just kill people and take it. Yeah, we just <laughs> yeah. We don't spend any money. Um, so now, like, the general vibe of the place that you're in now, it's a, it's a mist-shrouded village um, that's now beyond this wall that you're in. Um, there's nothing more than a scattering of, like, humble wooden cottages along dirt roads that stretch between strands of snow-dusted pine trees. Um, there are, like, a huge amount of trees within this walled settlement. Looks like they've they're specifically foresting trees inside this encampment for like wood, for building purposes, for heat, that kind of thing. Um, in fact, um, it almost constitutes a forest inside there. There's more of a forest than there is a settlement. Um, to the northeast, uh, the grey cliffs 
rise sharply out of the settlement uh, and the road is winding up to the abbey it's easy to see from this vantage are we taking the wine to the abbey um he asks you to deliver it to the burgomaster which is where the guards have like delivered you to um and as that um the building that's closest to the outer gates is in fact the burgomaster's cottage it's the largest building in town uh but it's still a modest dwelling um so running up behind you is this uh, red-faced gentleman um that's uh, um panting and heaving and he's now pulling on like his burgomaster's uh, regalement and adjusting his uh, burgomaster's like symbol on his chest uh, and he gets to the back um the guards part let him through and he gets to the back of the um uh the cart that you're driving and he goes well oh, my friends it's so good for you to, to see this uh you have uh, many early bottle of wine for us yes yes we've been so we've been sent for amazing. wine but we we want to make sure we're we want to make sure we're dropping it <laughs> off at the right place <laughs> Where is my uh, the man? Is my name is Dmitri Kreskov. I am the burgomaster. You are the burgomaster. I am the burgomaster. Yes. Can you prove it? Uh, he, he puffs up his chest and just rearranges the regalement on his body. This is big, like gleaming. Uh, it's not gold, but it's some kind of like brass or bronze. Like a necklace. mustard. <laughs> Uh, I guess really? you could call it my necklace a mustard colour, yes. And that's your form of ID? Absolutely. Nobody <laughs> will allow me to live here if I was uh, falsely wearing a regalement of the Burgmaster. Anybody could wear that. Have we actually gone in anyway yet, or are we just outside? <laughs> in the car. It's still outside. Still outside, yeah. yeah. Um, Let us into your house, yeah. and then we will believe that you would live there. Absolutely. <laughs> clear the way, clear the way. And he guides you back down to his um, cottage and he um, allows you to disembark and bring um, the wine with you. Um, and uh, he is, he's got, there's one woman living inside there as well um, who's got like a ruddy red complexion, looks about a similar age, maybe a, a little bit younger than he is. Um, He's saying there's a burger queen. Yes, I'm saying there's also a Burger Queen. Um, she's wearing like a, um, oh, what do they call it? It's a pinafore and a, like a ha habit, Hairnet. almost like a habit, but Has like a pure white. <laughs> um, Is she flipping burgers? And she dusts off her hands from like kneading dough uh, and uh, quickly lays the table, uh, the big sort of pine table in the middle. Uh, looks like it might be made of the same trees that line the interior of this place. Um, they look in their maybe sort of late 40s, early 50s at this point. And the Burgermaster himself has got like thinning hair. It's almost completely grey. He's got a thin grey beard. Uh, she um, he introduced his wife, Anna. Uh, she has a, a tight knit grey bun in her hair. Um a little bit more black in it than his um, and they invite you to sit down on the benches and they she starts doling out bread and cheese I have fries with that too oh please can I, just, um, can I have a milkshake with that um, Anna looks quizzically at you uh, they do have milkshake because they made cheese and so she um, grabs a ceramic pot and pours some milk in there from a jug. Uh, puts a hand over it and starts like sloshing it around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. And then puts it to you and just got some foamy milk. Nice. Um, why is everyone here so excited about the wine? Like, I know that wine is important, but that's that seemed like a bit of an overreaction. Oh, Davarishk. We have no, uh, we have not had the wine for many a moon. How many moons? At least two or three moon, which in Borovia mm -hmm. is way too many moon. Mm -hmm. 
How often does a moon happen? <laughs> uh, every 30 days or so. Okay. Was it the Red Dragon Crush or was it the Purple Grape Mash? Uh, we try and get a mixture of both. A little oh, bit of this, a little oh, bit okay. of that. So we didn't check our own bottles. Is it fancier stuff than he gave us? He's given no. He's given you a bunch of bottles of the purple grape mash. No barrels of the purple grape mash. Bottles of the red dragon crush. Yeah, and he's given you bottles of purple mash for them. He gave it to them. Oh, for them. Oh, it's yeah. fine. We've got barrels. Okay. Um, congratulations. The the route has been cleared as well, so you can keep getting wine. You are. He did that, by the way. He did that. Yes, and we would like to be. Rewarded as such. This Money. is incredible news. Um, we are incredibly poor. But however, um, we'll take the one away then. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I would like my reward to be that I am the next burger man of this town. You wish to be a burger man? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this I point, want to marry Anna. <laughs> uh, the dungeon master needs to take a quick 90 second break so I'd like for you all to talk amongst yourselves to see what you want to do next okay well we can't kidnap the man's wife and no. force her to marry someone that she has just met and probably has no interest in I've, I've done it at least but... 8 times before so <laughs> it's possible sure you have <laughs> whatever has happened let's not get stuck here for a long time let's find like a tool from yeah. here and then use that to our advantage. Maybe they have a bucket of sand. Yes, let's find their sand buckets. <laughs> okay, so we Maybe. want sand. Cool. We want sand. I genuinely have no recollection over what my tarot card was. So and same. Oh I yeah, like I, have no, I, have no I have no idea. I have no idea. I feel like we should just we should just not spend too long here, yeah. Yeah. and then go back to killing zombies and marionettes and. Children on accident? Yeah. 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 Um, I feel like we just need to know how to beat Strahd and who can help us. But now so we know. We, we know that the thing that beats him is that he's a massive, massive loser. Well, we need to stake him in the heart to stop him moving. Yeah. It, stake it, him in the heart, stop him moving, and dice him up. And then we'll just his, slap his head off. Feed him cream pies while he can't move. There's a in weakness. His, he said Don't in say in his cream diary, pies. No, yeah, his, feed him cream he, pies. He, he sleeps <laughs> underneath. Sleeps underneath what? He sleeps oh. under, underneath <laughs> And I now reside far below Ravenloft. I live among the dead in the sheep. Far below. Yeah, no, but and he said that he sealed off the entrance, so he closed off any way to get in there. Well, so we'll unless we just... Dis- no, yeah, no, no, we get it. We gotta disguise ourselves as wolves, or have the wolves take us in to... Yeah. No, the wolves we'll hate just... us. The wolves are dicks. They, they're yeah. not gonna be friendly with us. Why so let's kill them the and replace side? them. Let's just stand the other side of the wall. We'll start reading out the love letter. He'll get so embarrassed, he'll charge through the wall, and then we can stab him. Um, yeah, we'll read it out, and then we'll start making stuff up. And he'll get so offended that that's yeah. not what he wrote. He'll come and correct I think it. embarrassing him should be part of the plot. Um, yeah, I feel like it's every that. wolf in this entire land, though. So I don't think we can kill all of them. Sure, we can. We can try. We can try. <laughs> you say uh, you talk of wolves. Yeah. It is the reason why we have built this fortified village. It is because the wolves, the dire wolves, and especially the werewolves. Yeah, Welcome. the dicks. What about where birds ever met any of them? Yeah, flying where. I have never personally encountered any werebirds. <laughs> they never, forget, I said anything. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> what about bats? Uh, yes, we hear screeching of bat many a time in the night, but it is mostly the wolves we uh, we are wary of. They have killed so many of our populace, so that it, over 20 years ago we made these walls as high as we could make them, and sequestered ourselves in here. Anyone check the wolves? Sorry. I was just going to say, how do you know we're not wolves? All we did was flash a bit of wine and you let us in. <laughs> Well, there have never been wolves bearing wine before. <laughs> We're the wine wolves, not the werewolves. Um, he, We're not like, his, his eyes <laughs> widen. <laughs> his hand grips <laughs> his, 
his talisman around his neck and backs away and holds the table to steady himself. Um, Are you really here to finally exact revenge upon my populace? No, to kill us, to tear our throats. No, 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 no. Literally just here to bring you wine. Just to bring you wine and... Oh, thank, like, to be honest, we thank have the morning like, lord. We have this bad reputation where people think that we'll do things for them, and that's probably because we keep doing things for them. But we just want to give you the wine and be on our way. So you you, you, we don't want your wife. <laughs> your wife can stay here. I want his wife. <laughs> if you could just Anna make, looks sheepish. Tell us Wink. where we are or Very where we're sheep. around. I would like to be a wolf in her clothing. <laughs> in her clothing? That sounded not as sexy as I thought. <laughs> I, <give> it. <laughs> I have to wear her clothes. I apologise. <laughs> Once again, reiterate that we're not wolves or planning to steal your wife. Or wear her clothing. I'm a pirate. <laughs> I don't really know how to chat to women. <laughs> but you're chatting to her husband. Yeah. I feel stupid. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So, um, <laughs> the burger master is like, um, well, you have delivered a uh, wine. Um, will you do me the uh, honour of sitting at my table and mm. share bread, share cheese and share the wine with me before you no. have to set out once again? No. Yes. If you could quickly summarise any attempts to destroy the wolves that have been successful, anything we should know about the wolves that would help us, and anything remotely useful against bats, wolves, and vampire overlords. Absolutely. And Please join me here at my table. And no. Just, just the summary. Just the like footnotes. Um, and keep you tuned. Okay. Uh, in uh, footnotes, I'll, uh, my residents never leave the village for fear of being attacked by wolves, die wolves, and werewolves. Um, usually, once a month, a wagon load of wine arrives from the Wizard of Wines. Uh, however, that has not happened for three months until now. Um, I recently lost my 14-year-old son, Ilya, <laughs> to illness. Um, he was the last of my Kreskov children. There is no heir left to my family. The pool to the north of the end of the village provides fresh water throughout the year. Uh, and the Abbey of St. Markovia is named after a priest of the Morning Lord. The Abbey was once a hospital to a covenant, but it fell on hard times, and the land was swallowed up by the mists. Um, some of the clergy fell prey to Strad, while others went mad and either starved themselves to death or turned to cannibalism. Uh, the head of the Abbey, call, simply calls himself the Abbot, arrived over a century ago and hasn't aged a day since. He occasionally visits the, the Shrine of the Right Sun, but he doesn't talk much and demands tribute in the form of wine. Uh, no one here knows his true name or where he came from. Many believe he is Strahd's servant or the vampire himself in disguise. Uh, no one from the village visits the Abbey anymore. The Abbey bells rings at odd times during the day, uh, and the place is filled with baleful screams and horrible inhuman laughter that can be heard throughout the village. Two questions. Do you understand no. what brief means? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the last three months of the village down into about that was, ninety that was seconds. Fairly about, about the, the dead about monk. Yeah. Oh, um, I appreciate uh, this. Thank you very much. Who cares about this? Yeah, moving on. The <laughs> dead zombie. Like, who cares about undead, like <laughs> priest man? Let's talk about him, right? Uh, the abbot. The abbot. Uh, what do you want to know about him? Is no one interested in the fact that he might be working for Strad? He might. Strad's he, walls out? he might be Strad. Does that not a good thing to say? <laughs> did, like... I, did, I, did I say something bad? And <laughs> um, personally, I'd like to go back to your dead son for a second. Um, you mentioned I, I that you don't have an, but okay. an heir anymore. <laughs> you have no heir. No one to inherit. Uh, I used to have four friend. children and all of them have died one by one. The latest, Ilya, my 14-year-old son, died of illness. How, how do they die? Is it mysterious illnesses? No, well, Ilya did not die of mysterious illness. No, he died um, of consumption. Consumption. Um, my middle two um, were killed by hulls and my forced one uh, was killed uh, fighting against Strad von Zarovich himself. 
Um, so what would what would it take for someone to become your new heir? Um, there is no one left here, so it would go to the next most senior person in the village. Could that be me? You are not from our village, I'm afraid. Okay. As much as we idea? appreciate the delivery of wine, it would be kind of making a postman king. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Postman's quite a senior position. Also, are you telling us that you're going to give all the wine to the abbot? Is that what you're implying? We have to give at least some amount of wine, usually about 80% of the wine to the abbot, and then the rest is dis distributed amongst the rest of the populace, yes. Let's we should go. Yeah, we'll take it. What happens if you don't give it to the abbot? Uh, then he unleashes his uh, mad f uh, mad creatures upon us and kills us. What a dude. He Why sounds like him? a dick, yeah. It, has that happened before? Because you're all alive. So there has never been not... a missed payment in the last so three never months. Tried not the, wine. Uh, the last three months he has threatened us and it has become a point of... Um, I have sent uh, many a guardsman out into the woods over the last three two months to find out where the wine shipment is uh, and they have all died would you give yeah. us if we go and do it uh, i would the rather crown? you than me so we can have your crown uh no i am still alive yeah, but what if we <laughs> did it came back killed you would she then be the if we get rid of the abbot can can one of us inherit your burger man um when you die yeah Ro roll the persuasion check Which with advantage because all of you seem to want this well I say all of you a lot of you I want this no <laughs> at least I, the wine to the I see like definitely two of you point. maybe four of you <laughs> are on board with this I only rolled an eight which means I'm not getting the but with advantage oh and if Ellie if you're rolling it's just you wait what because you, um, if you're helping oh, nine tops, he's like, uh, mm, n yeah, no, it would have to go to the, um, um, who is elected instead of me. Fine, well, but we're not helping you then. Very well, we will just donate the wine to the abbot. Mm, no, we wouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I will take your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that seems to be the fair middle ground at this point. That actually seems reasonable. Yeah, we so tried everything else. <laughs> See, but, I was reasonable yeah. all along. <laughs> Paolo was onto something. I was onto his wife. Oh, no. Terrible. Fine. <laughs> we'll take the wine. I've had enough of your terrible, terrible company. Oh. So we're off to deliver the wine to the alcoholic monk who lives in the woods in the present age to try and see if we can either kill him or work out what he is. Okay. We're definitely going to kill him. <clears throat> so you, um, they offload 20% um, of the wine from your carriage um, and he stores it in his cellar uh, minus the three bottles that are already taken by the villagers. So you've still got 80% of the wine that was given to you. Um, they load it back into your cart under guard and then you get back onto your horse and cart and go up towards the monastery. Um, and out of 40 bottles, 20% is eight bottles, and then three bottles removed from that. So they have five bottles total. Correct. To be clear. <laughs> yes, correct. So after your math all is that, accurate. Yes. I'm very good with my math. So after all that, they got five bottles of wine. Yes. Idiots. They're very. <laughs> <laughs> there's three very lucky people in the village. I think Botticelli should be the, uh, the beggar man. They've waited three months for five bottles of wine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, eight, eight bottles technically, but two, three were stolen. But there's stolen. months and months to come, and if they're getting 100% of the wine in future, if we get rid of the monk, then they get even more wine. We're doing them, like, countless favours that's going to last a lifetime, so... And he would. Yeah. The, the, the they yeah. better give us our inheritance <laughs> of the entire town. Or at least his wife. <laughs> so at least his wife. <laughs> You get one we'll reward of a wife. We'll we call the knife and then we'll storm the town. It's fine. Have we just turned into like livery? What we've been doing in the last to, fucking. To, to Burger King. I think he specifically called me a postman. 
Yeah. <laughs> that was more Tim using an analogy rather than him saying it both. Um, if, we, if we kill the abbot, then we're the most senior people, right? Or we yeah, yeah, yeah. get something. Sure. Well, we'll come to that. Um, <laughs> the switchback road that hugs the cliff is 10 feet wide and covered in loose gravel and chunks of broken rock. The ascent is slow and somewhat treacherous, and the air grows colder as one nears the top. Um, the road from the village climbs above the mist to the wide ledge on which the abbey is perched. A light dusting of snow covers the trees and rocky earth. The gravel road passes between two small stone outbuildings, to either side of which stretches a five foot high, three foot thick wall of jumbled stones held together with mortar. Blocking the road are iron gates attached to the outbuildings by rusty mm. hinges. They appear to be unlocked, viewed through the gates. The stone abbey stands quiet. Its two wings are joined by 15-foot high curtain walls. A belfry protrudes from the top of the closer north wing, which also sports a chimney billowing grey smoke. And I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> We're going to go kill that guy. <laughs> so, kill that guy and get his wife. I hope yeah. everybody has enjoyed. I <laughs> know. Oh, Sorry. Oh. Well, you might have a wife, and if so, oh. we can. How low is it? I don't oh, think most can have wives. So I think I hope both my players <laughs> and the viewers have enjoyed tonight a little excursion into the demi plane of dread, um, the Curse of Strahd module. Um, more I enjoyed to going back to our old characters. For a bit. I hope I that you've got more of a feel. Of yeah. It's been so <laughs> long. Yeah, it has been so long. I need I needed more cheese balls myself. <clears throat> um, that's how I'm used to playing. So did game. Anna, the Burger Master's wife. <laughs> Why do I feel nostalgic about cheap yellow balls of Gar garbage <laughs> yes. sex? Um, yeah. I miss our Sunday tradition of roast dinner and then going to get copious amounts of wine and cheese <laughs> and then eating that all after roast dinner. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. Best. And then showing up to work on Monday at 9 a.m. feeling like absolute garbage. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I had a great weekend. It was fine. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> Let me sleep. <laughs> Before we started getting roast, we used to get pizza, and we also because I used to bring the the that you introduced us to the best hummus. It's yeah. The best hummus. Oh, it's so good. And, and the cheeses. Um, truffle brie. That's the most middle oh. class thing I've ever said. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> <Alice>. <laughs> Right. So that's an insight into us. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Free COVID. Away to our hearts. <laughs> it's wine, <laughs> cheese, yeah. pizza, and roast dinner. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you. I hope it's been sufficiently spooky, sufficiently uh, retrospective. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Now it's spooky. Oh my now, gosh. It's, now it was spooky. <laughs> that was... That scared me so much. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, I think Merry we'll end Christmas, our stream. Everyone. <laughs> So from me, your dungeon master, Tim. From you, Khalil. Your dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> Not a dungeon master. Um, how can people find you on the internet? Uh, uh, you can find me at Botticelli with the Shelly. Nice. <laughs> and Alice, where can people find you? At a -L -E -C -Y -E. Ellie, where can people find you? At Ellie Bab. And Josh, where can people stalk you? In the woods. Mm. Uh, at underscore Josh Den. And Annie, where can people shout at you over Zoom with a loud mic? I mean, I mean, after that shock, probably a hospital. <laughs> but other than that, at Annie underscore Squirrel. Lovely. And I'm at Lord, Lord Snapcase. We'll see you on Tuesday for a normal Crypt the Bed and in four weeks for another edition of Ravenloft. Remember, stay safe out there. <laughs> we'll see you soon. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you so Bye. much for watching. Is Goodbye. it our Christmas awesome. edition yeah. on Tuesday? Yeah. It's our yeah. Christmas yeah. edition on Christmas Tuesday. Edition. We're yeah. playing cards. Hey. Yep. Traditional Christmas yeah. cards. We'll see you all soon. Bye -bye. Ciao. See you Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>